Hey everybody, welcome back to Movies with Mia. If you're new to the channel, hi, I'm Mia Tiffany, and here we are watching the greatest classic films throughout history. Today we are continuing our most requested series with the film All About Eve. First things first, I'd like to shout out my Golden Oscar patrons. Guys, thank you so much for your continued support of the channel. And if you're interested in becoming an exclusive VIP Tiffany Club member, then I highly encourage you to check out that Patreon link, which is in the description box below. All About Eve was released in 1950, directed by Joseph L. Mankiewicz, featuring Betty Davis, Ann Baxter, George Sanders, and Celeste Holm, with other notable performances by Gary Merrill, Hugh Marlowe, Thelma Ritter, Gregory Radoff, Barbara Bates, Walter Hampton, and the lovely Miss Marilyn Monroe. All right, guys, at this point, we are going to get into some historical background. For those of you who want to jump right onto the film reaction, go for it. But for those of you who want to stay, we're going to get right into it. All About Eve originated as a short story titled The Wisdom of Eve, written by Mary Orr, and published in a May 1946 issue of Cosmopolitan magazine. Orr was inspired to write her short story after learning of a real-life situation between actress Elizabeth Bergner and a young female fan of hers. The short story was turned into a radio play three years later in 1949. Around this time, a story editor named James Fisher passed the short story over to Joseph L. Mankiewicz, who would later convince 20th Century Fox to purchase the rights from Mary Orr for $3,500. Mank would eventually adapt the short story into a screenplay. Once Mank finalized a screenplay, the next step, of course, was casting the project. And Mank decided to cast Claudette Colbert in the role of Margot Channing. Fortunately, he had the privilege of casting his first choice for the role of Eve Harrington, actress Anne Baxter. Now, just a few weeks before shooting was to begin, unfortunately, Claudette Colbert had an accident that resulted in a back injury, which barred her permanently from starring in this project, which left Mank without a principal character. Luckily, around this time, Betty Davis had just finished production on the film Payment on Demand and received a call from producer and studio head at the time, Daryl Zanuck, who thought that she would be perfect for the role of Margot Channing. Zanuck would send her the script and told her that should she agree to do the role, she would only have less than two weeks before they started filming. After reading the script, Davis fell in love with the role of Margot Channing, believing that this was the role of a lifetime. So she agreed to do the project. All About Eve would later be nominated for a whopping 14 Oscars at the 23rd Academy Awards and would win six, including Best Picture. All right, on to some interesting facts. So production for All About Eve began in April of 1950 in San Francisco, California. Once it was known that Betty Davis was to replace Claudette Colbert, there was a lot of uneasiness that was felt amongst some of the cast members, specifically Celeste Holm. She and Davis immediately butted heads during production. Holm felt that Davis was extremely rude and disrespectful, so she made it a point to never speak to her off screen. And of course, with Davis, the feeling was mutual. <laughs> However, Davis did take a liking to actress Ann Baxter. This came as a bit of a shock to cast and crew, given the fact that Davis really never got along with her female co-stars, but the two did have inside jokes together off screen, and Davis would even go as far as to publicly praise Baxter for her performance. Davis took a particular liking to actor Gary Merrill. Now, it was apparent that the two had an attraction to each other, one that would eventually lead to the dissolution of both of their marriages and a 10-year marriage to each other. Many of the cast and crew would later recollect on how they really enjoyed the experience of working on All About Eve, specifically George Sanders and Betty Davis, both saying similarly that it was a great pleasure to work on a film that would eventually become a great masterpiece. And finally, All About Eve is the only film in Oscar history to receive four female acting nominations. That is Betty Davis and Ann Baxter for Best Actress and Thelma Ritter and Celeste Holm for Best Supporting Actress. With that being said, I am so excited to watch All About Eve. But before we do, y'all know the deal. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification to stay in the all right, everyone, it is time to grab your snacks, grab your drinks, maybe make a little martini, and let's get in to All About Eve. 
I was most excited that George Sanders is in this because I freaking love me some George Sanders. And then, of course, like Betty Davis and, you know, everyone else. <laughs> the Sarah Siddons Award is perhaps unknown to you. It is important that you know why you are here. The Sarah Siddons Society, presentation of the highest honor our theater knows. So this is like a high honors award. Very distinguished. The minor awards have already been presented, such as the writer and director to construct a tower so that the world can applaud a light. Oh, handsome man. Hi. Another handsome man. Hello. <laughs> no brighter light has ever dazzled the eye than Eve Harrington. But more of Eve later. My name is Addison DeWitt. My native habitat is the theater. Miss <laughs> George! I know that this is him narrating too, but I love to see his face. I am essential to the theater. This is Karen Richards. She is the wife of a playwright. Margot Channing is a star of the theater. She never was or will be anything less or anything else. There's Betty Davis. Why is she so glamorous? That's like the Tony Awards. times have I placed in deserving hands this highest honor. How fitting that it should pass from my hands to hers. Such young hands. Oh, interesting that we're we're seeing her hands first before her face. They're really like playing up Eve Harrington. Her humility, her loyalty to her art, her deep and abiding love. The Sarah Siddons Award to Miss Eve Harrington. She's beautiful. She kind of looks like Joan Fontaine a little. Like even in like the like her frame, she looks like Joan Fontaine. Oh. Oh. Oh, we have some shade? I see some smoke there, a little bit of, like, mm-hmm. I see you, boo. Eve the Golden Girl. Life goes where she goes, what she wears, and whom she knows. And oh, she's like celebrity star status. It seems a lifetime ago. It's June now. That was early October. It was a drizzly night. I'd become so accustomed to seeing her there night after night, wondering where she was. Personally, it's one of my favorite ways of storytelling, by narration or by recollection, because it's literally somebody telling a story and the story unfolding through the perspective of the character that you're hearing it from. So it's just really cool. It seemed odd suddenly. You're not being here. What do you do in between the time Margot goes in and comes out? I see the play. You've seen every performance of this play? Yes. Wow. Talk about devotion. She's just standing there watching every single play every single night. That has got to be costly, bro. I'm going to take you to Margot. Hi. Hello. Well, now, Miss Chan, I think you can rightly say good luck. Margot, you've got to see her. She worships you. It's like something out of a book. That would be so surreal to be amidst actors that you're really like fond of. Oh, my God. You must have spotted her by now. She's always there. The mousy one with the trench coat and the funny hat. Every night, every matinee. I oh thought my God, you'd I'd forgotten be so about starstruck. Oh, Margo? <laughs> She's like, oh, I know who you're talking about. That one. Hello, Miss Channing. My husband. And this is my dear friend, Bertie Coonan. She's playing Hamlet's mother. You must have things to do. If I haven't, I'll find something till you get normal. Thelma is my new favorite actress ever. I freaking love Thelma. Have you really seen every performance? Yes. But you must have friends, a home. Tell us about no. it, Eve. Well... She's like, what did I just walk in on? <laughs> did I interrupt something? <laughs> Go on. It started with the play before this one. Remembrance. I went one night. I found myself oh. going the next night. And the next. And the next. When the show went east, I went east. When you're going to every single performance to the point where you're moving cross-country to follow said performance, that's a little bit of a red flag. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna leave that there for now. I was an only child. I used to make believe a lot when I was a kid. Farmers were poor in those days. That's what Dad was. I had to help out. I became a secretary in a brewery. She definitely, definitely wants to be an actor. She has the hunger for it, I can tell. It wasn't much fun, and there was a little theater group there. That's where I met Eddie. Then the war came, and we got married. Eddie was in the Air Force. They sent him to the South Pacific. Oh, I forget this is after the war. <laughs> Duh, 1950. I'm, like, not even thinking. With Eddie gone, my life went back to beer. One week, he wrote me he had a leave coming up and went to San Francisco to meet him. They forwarded the telegram from Milwaukee. Eddie wasn't coming at all. I feel like there's something that I'm not quite believing in her character. Um, I don't know what it is yet, but I'm just getting that sense. Like, there's something else there. I figured I'd stay in San Francisco. I found a job, and then one night, Margot Channing came to play in Remembrance. Well, here I am. 
riveting. So she lost her husband, but clearly they're eating it up like frickin' putty. Everything but the bloodhound snapping at her rear end. There are some human experiences that do not take place in a vaudeville house. Even a fifth-rate vaudevillian should understand and respect. <laughs> She's like, what? Try again. I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. And as for being fifth race, I closed the first half for 11 years and you know it. She's a freaking queen in her own right. We love Thelma Ritter on this channel and we need more of her. <laughs> 47 minutes from now, my plane takes off and how do I find you? Is it sabotage? Does my career mean nothing to you? I start shooting a week from Monday. Zanuck is impatient. Bill, huh? this is Eve Harrington. Hi. He's like, hi. Didn't even freaking acknowledge her. Heaven help me. I love a psychotic. Hello. What's your name? Like, You've literally just said, met. my name's Eve. Uh -huh. You're not going, are you? I think I'd better. I don't know. I don't, I don't feel like I can... <sighs> There's something about her that's, like, not quite truthful or real. I don't know. No, stick around. We'll put Stanislavski on his plane, you and I, and then go somewhere and talk. I won't be a minute. Lloyd, we've got to go. I'd be so scared to act against Betty Davis. I'd be so nervous. Good night, Eve. I hope I see you again soon, as a friend. I'd like that. Mrs. Richards, I'll never forget this night as long as I live. Well, now they've officially let her into their life, so we'll see what happens. So you're going to Hollywood? Why? Why? Why what? Is it the money? Eighty percent of it'll go for taxes. Then why? May not be your theater, but it's theater for somebody somewhere. You always have that one ambitious character, and then you have this more seasoned character. So you have this romanticized idea of being in the industry and then this reality of showbiz. Quite a girl is what's her name. I've forgotten they grew that way. Bill, hmm? don't get stuck on some glamour puss. Am I going to lose you, Bill? Already. Oh, their chemistry is something a different. I like it. Thanks for your help. Good luck. Call me when you get it. I like their relationship. Keep your eye on her. Don't let her get lonely. Don't worry. I don't know you like that, and I don't feel comfortable, like, bringing you into my personal life. Like, that is, is, that might just be, like, a different timing thing. The next three weeks were out of a fairy tale. Eve became my sister, lawyer, mother, friend, psychiatrist, and cop. Betty Davis. It's like she could do anything she wanted on screen, and nobody was going to tell her no, because she's freaking Betty Davis. Lovely, lovely. She always looks at her so, like, intensely. Eve is a very interesting character. Why, thank you. Is she crying? Oh, she looks lovely in that outfit, by the way. I love that dress on her. Wow. You haven't noticed my latest bit of interior decorating. The curtains. I made them myself. It was very thoughtful of you, Eve. I appreciate it. While you're cleaning up, I'll just take this to the wardrobe, mistress. I definitely do have to applaud Ann Baxter, because I feel like she's so invested in her character. Have you ever heard of the word union? The wardrobe women have got one. A wardrobe woman is the touchiest thing in showbiz. Don't let anybody try to muscle in. Thank you. Eve. Why'd she get all scared all of a sudden? It's okay. So she definitely, obviously, wants to be in the role of Margot Channing, like that praised actress. We'd better let Mrs. Brown pick up the wardrobe. Bill, <laughs> I want you home. You in a hurry? In a big hurry. Goodbye, darling. There is very much a comfortable nature to her, her on-screen presence that you feel through the screen, which is fantastic to see when you're watching an actor act. Wait a minute, you can't hang up yet. You haven't even said it. That's kid stuff. Doesn't happen every day and I want to hear it. It's your birthday. Oh, it's his birthday. She forgot his birthday. That's terrible. Happy birthday, darling. It's no secret. I know all about the party. Eve wrote me. Well, she know all about that. You probably tell her what to write. I'll check with Eve. Good night, darling. There is a lot of um, raw emotion and, and natural talent kind of happening. So it's really cool to see in a classic film. Don't like Eve. Why not? She thinks only about you. Like she's studying you. How you walk, talk, eat, think. Bertie, I'm sure there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, that is a little strange. Like, she's really studying her. Eve, by the chance did you place a call from me to Bill? Golly, I forgot to tell you. I guess I was asleep when you got home. It was very thoughtful of you, Eve. She is the tip-top assistant. Assistant of the Year Award goes to Miss Eve Harrington. I sent him a telegram myself. There's something in her eyes that just don't match with 
her mannerisms. Something is off. I'm with Thelma on this one. I'm with Birdie. I'm like, mm, she a little too, she a little too sneaky. I, I don't know. I, I'm not feeling it. Even before the party started, I could smell disaster. Does Miss Channing know that she ordered domestic gin by mistake? The only thing I ordered by mistake is the guest. <laughs> there really is a beauty about Betty Davis. And it is a bunch of different perspectives, different stories. Where's Billy's late? He's been here for 20 minutes. Well, I certainly think it's odd he hasn't even come up. She's like, well, who do you think was behind that? I see anything looking through the wrong end, so that was the first and last. Is she wearing the same dress as her? No. Similar, though. Would you check about the hors d'oeuvres, Eve? Of course. I had no idea you were even here. Ran into Eve and she told me you were dressing. That's never stopped you before. Why did you come and say hi to me? Why did you talk to Eve first? She seemed so interested. She's a girl of so many interests. So she seemed. So many qualities so often. So young and so fair. I can't believe you're making this up. Ooh, her dress has pockets. Okay, Queen, I see you. Oh, she's starting to become a little jealous of Eve. This is all too laughable to be anything else. Now this ridiculous attempt to whip yourself up because I spent ten minutes with a stage-struck kid. Stage-struck kid? She's a young lady of qualities. I am with Margot on this one. I feel like there's something a little fishy about Eve, and I don't know. I don't like it. Studying me is how I walk, talk, think, <laughs> act, sleep. How can you take offense at a kid trying to be as much like her ideal as possible? Stop! Calling her a kid. I can see why now Margot didn't like Bill calling her a kid because calling her a kid kind of condones the behavior of, of Eve. There are aspects of my life to which I would like to maintain exclusive rights and privileges. For instance, you. You have to keep your teeth sharp. All right, but I will not have you sharpen them on me. Ooh, she's like, you? She's like, I don't want anyone playing with you. Or on Eve. Eve Harrington has never by word indicated anything to me but her adoration for you and her happiness at our being in love. It spells a paranoid insecurity that you should be ashamed of. How can you not see that Eve is just, like, finding her way into your guys' lives? Come on. Miss Channing. The hors d'oeuvre here. Thank you, Eve. I'd like a martini. Very dry. What'll you have? A milkshake. A martini. Very dry, please. She even covered her drink order. Come on! I know Eve was sitting there listening to that conversation, too. The whole thing. She heard it. Dear? Hello, Eve. Good evening, Mr. Richards. Margot, nothing you've ever done has made me as happy as you're taking Eve in. The general atmosphere is very Macbethish. What has or is about to happen? See, everyone feels the energy is really strange. Because it's very palpable. You feel it. Fasten your seatbelt. It's going to be a bumpy night. What are you doing Oh, here? there's Marilyn! Yeah. Uh, you remember Miss Caswell, don't you? I do not. How do you do? We've never met. Oh my god, it's Marilyn! Oh, and of course George. I forgot. George is there too. <laughs> Eve, this must be at long last a formal introduction. Addison, I've been wanting you to meet Eve for the longest time. I'm afraid Mr. DeWitt would find me boring. You won't even get a chance to talk. It's like she's using her character in a movie that isn't really calling for it, I guess. It's a little, like, off. But nonetheless, I love seeing Marilyn. She's amazing. Wondering when they may be permitted to view the body. You're looking at it. The remains of Margot Channing. <laughs> it's like this is a funeral service. You by any chance haven't got any bicarbonate of soda in the house? Of course I've got bicarb. It's friends that count. I love you, Max. I, I feel love like Betty you. Davis is not even playing Margot Channing. She's just playing Betty Davis. But not to say that she's not acting well. She's just... This character seems so similar to her from the stories that I've heard about her. The situation I'm in ain't the kind you can belt your way out of. I made a promise well, for an audition, you know. When's the audition? A couple of weeks. Why don't I read with her? <laughs> oh my God, she's a queen. And now you can do me a great favor. Give Eve Harrington a job in your office. Please I take her. I don't think it's such a good idea. Promise. Promise. That's my next. Yep, she's like, I'm about to get rid of Eve before she bleeds me dry. <laughs> it's like siphoning energy off of Margot. How's the new one coming? Play? Oh, all right, I guess. Cora, still a girl of 20. Margot, you haven't got any age. Spoken like a press agent. I know what I'm talking about. I, I like that they're really bringing up some of these very real, serious issues within the industry. Lloyd, I'm not 20. Three months ago, I was 40 years old. That slipped out. Now I suddenly feel as if I've taken all my clothes off. They say 40 is a new 37 and a half, so, you know. Really, do you get the vulnerability of her character? There's very little to do with whether you should play Cora. You've had another fight with Bill. Bill's 32. We we'll look at 20 years from now. I hate <laughs> men. That really needed a lot of vulnerability from the actress, and I think Betty Davis, 
showed that effortlessly. That is how you know she is a great actor. How are things going with you? Being here with Miss Channing has been, a, I just can't say. She's been so wonderful, done so much for me. You've done your share, Eve. You've worked wonders with Margot. I feel like at the same time you can't hate Eve because she's like so freaking nice. Mrs. Richards, I'm about to ask you for another favor. When I heard Mr. Fabian tell Miss Channing that her understudy was going to have a baby and you want to be Margot's new understudy, there'd be no need to break in a new girl. She is really nice, but there's something that's too perfect about her that I think is easier to kind of dislike. Margot just doesn't miss performances. The show must go on. Margot must go on. As a matter of fact, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't be her understudy. Would you speak to Mr. Fabian about it? Of course. Hmm... I do not feel comfortable with that. We're a breed apart from the rest of humanity, we theater folk. You won't have to read his column tomorrow, Eve. You just heard it. Well, I'll admit there's a screwball element in the theater, but it isn't basic. I kind of like the framing here in this scene. It's an interesting way to kind of show the conversation happening. The theater is nine-tenths hard work. To be a good actor or actress means wanting to be that more than anything else in the world. Yeah. Yes, it does. Whatever mask she puts on, or facade she puts on when she's talking to Margot, it slips when she's talking about acting. And the way that Ann Baxter plays it is brilliant. Really like that. It gives so much for almost always so little. Why, if there's nothing else, there's applause. Like waves of love coming over the footlights. Just that alone is worth anything. Wow. Go Anne, okay? Queen? This queen? Stop acting as if I was a queen mother. Look, and she just put she just put the mask right back on. Did you see that? Oh, that is brilliant. Margo, really? How about calling it a night? All you can think of is everybody go to sleep. Cut it out. This is my house, not a theater. In my house, you're a guest. There is a sort of empowerment in this film where a lot of the core actors are women. And they're, this story is kind of being told through their eyes. There's a sort of empowerment in that. It's about time Margot realized that what's attractive on stage need not be attractive off. I'm going to bed. Need any help? Eve would, wouldn't you, Eve? If you'd like, huh. I wouldn't like. There's a somberness to these characters. It's almost like nobody is happy. <laughs> the only person who doesn't seem to exhibit that is Eve. So it's really cool that you kind of see those different stages of these actors. It's, it's fascinating. You mustn't mind, Margot. The reason is Margot, and don't try to figure it out. Well, she has to pick on someone. You won't forget, will you? What we talked about before. I won't forget. They shouldn't call this all about Eve. They should call it something about Eve, because there's something about that girl that I just don't like. The audition is over. Who read with Miss Caswell? Naturally enough, your Eve. understudy. Your new and unpregnant understudy, Miss Eve Harrington. My understudy. Didn't you know? She didn't even go through Margot to ask. She went through someone else. That's some shady stuff, bro. How uh, was Miss Gaswell? Frankly, I don't remember. Was she that bad? Once in a great while, I experienced that moment of revelation. You were one. Eve Harrington will be among them. It's like at that point, you know that she's not there for you. She's there for her own self-interests. It wasn't a reading, it was a performance. How oh nice. boy. Tell me, was Bill swept away too? Bill didn't say, but Lloyd was beside himself. How nice for Lloyd. I could see how this could make her feel... Like her value goes down. Lloyd felt as he did only because she read his lines exactly as he'd written them. My recollection, neither your name nor your performance entered the conversation. Ah, oh, Margot, darling. Uh, she just, she was like, she ignored him and threw her coat over his face. That is craziness. So we start, oh, hello, Eve. How are you making out in Mr. Fabian's office? I don't want you working this child too hard. I kept my promise, too. It's all over. Eve read with Miss Caswell. I feel like she's an opportunist and she's trying to like, I don't know, steal Margot Channing's role or I guess just become an actor through connections, which is that really something to hate, right? But just the way that she's going about it feels wrong. Oh, how enchanting. Well, she's your understudy. Eve, my understudy? I have no idea. So Eve is not working for Max after all. Max, you sly puss. <laughs> sly puss. <laughs> If you'd come in the middle, I would have stopped. All that fire and music being turned off. 
How was Miss Caswell? But Eve, Margot, let me tell you about Eve. I was dreadful, Miss Channing. Oh, stop with this freaking humility freaking game. We know what you're in for, Eve. We know. We see you. She was a revelation. Oh, to you too. You have a 24-year-old character played by a 24-year-old actress. You've been talking to that venomous fishwife, Addison DeWitt, playing that game of cat and mouse. Never mouse. Even though, yes, this movie was directed by a man, there is a lot of perspective from women and how women view other women. It's really cool that we kind of get that. Accused of reading your silly dialogue as if it were the holy gospel. The stars never die and never change. You may change this star anytime you want, starting with tonight's performance. I kind of like the way that they kind of had the camera on her from the face down to right about below her neck, then a half shot, then a full body shot. It's very interesting that he, he decided to do those cut scenes. It's very interesting. Just when does an actress decide they're her thoughts she's expressing? When she has to rethink them to keep the audience from leaving the theater. The dialogue is so fascinating because it really is showing the complexity of these characters. It debunks the whole conversation that films of the of the classic era are just told from one perspective because they're absolutely not, you know? A body with a voice, no mind. The gong rang, the fight's over, calm down. I will not calm down. I will not be tolerated and I will not be plotted against. He's completely passive about this whole situation. Like, he doesn't realize what's going on. Arrives here for an audition when everyone knows I will be here. Carefully rehearsed, I have no doubt. Because you've got to stop oh. hurting yourself and the two of us by these paranoid tantrums. Oh, and paranoid tantrums. He doesn't... You're not listening, Bill! You're a beautiful and an intelligent woman and a great actress. But due to some strange, uncontrollable drive, you permit the slightest action of a kid like Eve to turn you into an hysterical, screaming harpy. He doesn't understand. It's just like different perspectives. I can't be mad at him because he's he doesn't understand where she's coming from. He doesn't realize, like, the game that's being played. Margot, let's make peace. Just stopping all this nonsense about Eve, isn't that enough? I wish it were. What would be enough? If we got married? I wouldn't want you to marry me just to prove something. I feel like Mank really captured the miscommunication between men and women. I said before it was going to be my last try and I meant it. We usually wind up screaming and throwing things and everything's <laughs> fine. But not this time. Goodbye, Margot. <gasps> like goodbye, like goodbye, goodbye, like goodbye, goodbye? Like did he just break up with her? Goodbye? Where are you going? He's leaving. To find Eve. That suddenly makes the whole thing believable. It's just interesting that he really captured the true essence of, of those, those miscommunications in relationships. I mean, Mankiewicz is a freaking writer, man. Of all the star-ridden, hysterical... Margo again. And again and again, not knowing Eve was her understudy. Right. Who's to give her that boot in the rear she needs and deserves? This is like... What? How did this come out in 1950? What are we talking about? The 1950s were an interesting decade for, for cinema. My big idea came to me just sitting on a couch. I had it. It would all seem perfectly legitimate. And after all, it was no more than a perfectly harmless joke and no reason why she shouldn't be told about it. Ooh. I don't like jokes or pranks. I feel like that's not a good... <laughs> Not good to do that in this situation right now. Will you please call Miss Eve Harrington to the oh phone? God. Somehow we staggered through Sunday. She and Lloyd had thawed out to the extent of being civil to each other. <laughs> I love this, this. That shot was really nice. What time is it? It is now 5.43. I now just don't be... want Margot to miss her train. As it is, she'll barely make the theater. We'll be at the station in plenty of time. Lloyd! Oh, jeez. Uh-uh. Be careful on that snow, baby. Now what's this? Uh-oh, the car. Oh man, the car has stopped. We can't be out of gas. I filled it myself yesterday. Just incredible. Oh, I understand. Okay, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. The car breaking down was on part of Karen so that Margot could miss the performance so that Eve could be her understudy and play in the role. That's really screwed up. What kind of friends are you? I'm gonna walk up about a half a mile. I haven't been very pleasant this weekend. For that, I'm truly sorry. We know you too well. And so many people know me. I wish I did. I wish someone would tell me about me. Who I am. <laughs> I feel that on a spiritual level. You're Margot. What is that? Besides something called a temperament. What about Bill? Bill's in love with Margot Channing, but Margot Channing will have ceased to exist. And what's left will be what? That's deep, bro. That is a deep concept. What? <laughs> Mankiewicz, what? About 
Eve. I've acted pretty disgracefully toward her. Let's say I've been oversensitive to the fact that she's so young. So many things I want to be for Bill. Yeah. She's like, has a, an envy of her. The things you drop, you forget you'll need them again when you get back to being a woman. No matter how many other careers we've had or wanted. Sooner or later, we've got to work mm -hmm. out. She is spitting some freaking truth right now. Margo, I want you to know how sorry I am about this. About what? This. Don't give it a thought. After all, you didn't personally drain the gasoline. Um, but she did. You know Karen is feeling that too. Are you proud of me, Bill? Oh my god. I had my doubts. With work and patience, she'll be a good actress. Is that what you want me to be? I'm talking about what, what you want. So am I. What the hell, Eve? I knew she was a freaking snake, bro. I freaking felt it. Good luck. Don't run away, Bill. I'm in love with Margo. Hadn't you heard? What I go after, I want to go after. I don't want it to come after me. Oh. He said, try again. He said, try again, honey. Don't cry. Just score it as an incomplete forward pass. You're not Margot Channing. Ew, hold on a second, Bill. Just revealed a deeper level of his character. When he says he's in love with Margot, he's in love with her. He's not in love with the image of her or the idea of her. That was a really a beautiful moment of, of seeing into the complexity of the male character as well. There she is, look at her. Who is it? Look at her. That's really Eve Harrington. May I come in? Certainly, Mr. DeWitt. Look at the way she goes back in her mask! Oh my god, Anne! You queen! Of course, your performance was no surprise to me. You're more than kind. I'm just the carbon copy you read when you can't find the original. <laughs> You're more than modest. I just don't try to kid myself. She is so... Ooh! I shall want to do a column about you. There's so much I want to know. I've heard your story in fanatical attachment to Margot. It started in San Francisco, didn't it? Why? Why'd she hesitate? That's right. Do you share my high opinion of San Francisco? Yes, I do. She's never been to San Francisco. What theater was it in San Francisco? The Schubert? Yes, the Schubert. What was your husband's name? Eddie? She's hesitating! Liar! Oh my god, the way that this is written is amazing! I'm about to go to the shower. I won't be able to hear you. Where would you like to go? We must make this a special night. You take charge. I believe I will. Do you see how she was a little bit seductive in that moment? Because she was trying to deter him from asking her questions about San Francisco and her husband. You know why? Because she's a freaking liar. That's why. Miss Harrington had much to tell about the lamentable practice of permitting mature actresses to what? continue playing roles. I can't believe Eve said those things. These 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 female characters, giving them more personality and, and more struggle. I think that's that's something that other women watching this in the audience can really relate with. What gets me is how all the papers happen to catch that particular performance. The little witch must have snatched critics out of bars and, and steam rooms, but she won't get away with it. Oh my god, I love her! Betty Davis is a queen! I came as soon as I read that piece of filth. I ran all the way. <sighs> Bill's here, baby. Everything's all right now. I feel like now he can kind of understand what was going on in her mind. Addison taking advantage of a kid like that, making her say what he wanted her to say. Where'd you get all that information? Eve, she's been to see me. You just missed her. Oh. Weird. You know, I've been going over our financial condition. That's quite a change of subject. I've been thinking we could put footsteps into production right away. If we can cast it properly, that is. So you're saying you want you want Eve to star in your in your play? Mm, Eve did mention the play, but just in passing. Lloyd Richards, you are not to give that contemptible little worm the part of Cora. All this fuss and hysteria <laughs> because an impulsive kid. No, she's not a kid. She's 24. She's a freaking manipulator. That's what Eve is. Darling, I didn't promise Eve anything. Just that I thought she'd be fine for the part. I certainly wouldn't make a change without your approval. Fine and dandy. Just refer all of Miss Eve Harrington's future requests to me. <laughs> The women in this movie are queens. Tonight, Miss Margot Channing gave a performance which I have never seen before. I understand that your understudy has given her notice. Too bad. I'm broken up about it. And I love that they love you. Like, he really, truly loves her. Like her. It's beautiful. You just can't pick up champagne and drink it. I shall propose the toast with all my heart. Margot, marry this my man. My bride to be. Oh, Margot! It's an engagement party. It's like if you don't marry him, Margot, I'm gonna reach in there and make you marry him. Point is this: in a cathedral, a ballpark, or a penny arcade, 
we want you two beside us as our nearest and dearest friends. That is so thoughtful. It's really showing the differences in men and women and how we think and how that can lead to miscommunication in relationship or how that can be used to kind of work together. It's such a wild card. I wasn't prepared for it, but I love it so much. There are very few moments in life as good as this. Let's remember it. To each of us and all of us, never have we been more close. May we never be farther apart. That sounds a little foreboding. I'm not going to lie. Next time, tell your lover to blow smoke rings. The world is full of love tonight. No woman is safe. Meet me in the ladies' room, Eve. What do you want, Eve? God, she is not my type of person. She's too freaking exhausting. I have no possible interest in anything she'd have to say. Karen, I've never let you go to the ladies' room alone. <laughs> now I must. All right. She always has, she always finds a way to weed herself into different freaking relationships, bro. I was wondering whether you'd come at all. Don't get out. Don't act as if I were the queen mother. <laughs> it's a recycled line. I've got a lot to say and none of it's easy. Easy or not, I won't believe a word of it. Please sit down. I remember I had a tooth pulled once. They gave me some anesthetic. It affected me strangely. She is playing her silly. And you felt just like that talking to Addison. You find yourself trying to say what you mean. Do you expect me to believe that you didn't say any of those things? I don't expect you to believe anything. I don't. She's trying to manipulate you, bro. She's playing the game, dude. Don't fall for it. I've been told off. Miss Channing should be happy to hear that. Eve, don't cry. You have a powerful friend in Addison. You were my friend. He can help you. I'd like him to be dead. I want my friends back. I feel like she's only saying that because what she said in the interview freaking backfired. I don't think you meant to cause unhappiness. Nothing is forever in the theater. Don't worry too much about what people think. And believe it or not, if there's anything I can do, there is something. Oh my god, she roped her in! This could this situation could happen to anybody watching. Anybody. That's the scariest part of it. You ought to play Cora. Don't you know that part was written for Margot? If you told him so, he'd give me the part. He said he would. It's my part now. Oh, uh, look at her! She changed! Over my dead body. Addison knows how Margot happened to miss that performance. It's quite a story. Addison could make quite a thing of it. You better sit down. You look a bit wobbly. She's blackmailing her. This is Eve mother freaking Harrington. That's really her. You do all that just for a part. I do much more for a part that good. Yeah, she'd literally kill for a part that good. Literally kill, murder, cold blood. Karen and I had a nice talk. Including a casual reference to the part of Cora. She'll be happy to do what she can to see that I play. Now that she's got everything she wants, right? What happens when a woman just like her was willing to take her down? I wonder what would happen then. You mean all this time she's done nothing but apologize? Give Karen more wine. Never have I seen so much elite waiting for me to crack that little gnome on the noggin. But not tonight. I've never felt so much for a character in this particular situation as I do right now for Karen. Lloyd, will you promise not to be angry with me? I don't want to play Cora. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> She's just lost it. There's two kind of emotions there where you were very relieved that Margot kind of came out of this situation with Eve. And then you have this impending anxiety for Karen. Like, there's a freaking storm coming, okay? Beautiful, beautiful scene. Wow. Hello? I room across the hall from Eve Harrington. She's been crying all night and she doesn't want a doctor. But I saw Mr. Richards with her a couple of times. Hello, this what? is Lloyd Richards. Where is Eve? Let me talk to her. Hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. First of all, a random woman calling my house at 3 a.m. in the morning to get a hold of my husband for another woman that he's been spending time with? No. Uh... That's a problem. We have an issue. She's upstairs in her room. The way Eve's been feeling, I've just been worried sick. What with her leaving tomorrow for New Haven? Then call uh, the hospital. Don't call my house. For my husband, no less. Tell her not to worry. Tell her I'll be right over. He's about to go. Are you kidding me right now? She is crazy. But is she also genius? Because she got everything that she wanted. I can't wait for tonight to come. Almost four. Plenty of time for a nice long nap. You could sleep now, couldn't you? Why not? The mark of a true killer. I wouldn't call her a physical killer, like a murderer, but she is a killer of another sense. What did I say, killer? I meant champion. I get my boxing terms mixed. Addison, come in for a minute, will you? We're having everyone up after the performance. We are? Lloyd and I. Lloyd and I. Yeah, it's a little odd. When I said this would be a night to remember, I didn't mean just the theater. What else? Lloyd Richards. We're going to be married. She's freaking gonna steal Karen's husband! Still just the theater after all. I'm in love with Lloyd. No, you're not. The most successful playwright in America and artistically the most promising, Eve, dear. This is Addison. 
This is Addison. Like, I know you. There's no telling how far we can go. He'll write great plays for me. Well, say something. Congratulations. Skoll. Good work, Eve. Look closely, Eve. I am Addison DeWitt. Mm. <laughs> she thought that she could manipulate him. Killer to killer. Champion to champion. Now, Lloyd may leave Karen, but he will not leave Karen for you. You will not marry Lloyd. I will not permit it. After tonight, you will belong to me. Ooh. What? <laughs> What a turn of events! Belong to you. That sounds medieval. You and I. <laughs> oh, wow. Get out. You're too short for that gesture. She messed with the wrong champion. If you catch my drift. This is about to get crazy. Your name is not Eve Harrington. It's Gertrude Sluzinski. Dang! Your parents would like to know how you are. They haven't heard from you for three years. She abandoned her parents? It's also true that you worked in a brewery until your boss's wife had your boss followed the $500 you got brought you straight to New York, didn't it? Oh, he's got her in checkmate now. This is a game. She was a liar. She was a liar! <laughs> oh, she's unraveling. She's unraveling. You've never been married. It was an insult to dead heroes and the women who loved them. Wow. I knew it! I knew it! She hesitated. You've never been to San Francisco. I had to get in to meet Margot. You paid her back by trying to take Bill away. That's not true! I no, no, no! <laughs> yes, yes, yes! That's totally true. You're an improbable person, Eve. We have that in common. Also, an inability to love and be loved. Insatiable <laughs> ambition. We deserve each other. We were made for each other. <laughs> this is written so well. I won't play tonight. Not possibly. Couldn't go on. Oh, but you're going you to. give the performance of your life. life. <laughs> she flew way too close to the sun there. She is an absolute Icarus. She thought she could get out unscathed, but now she's stuck. And she gave the performance of her life. Honored members of the Sarah Sidden Society. I am an apprentice in the theater. I must give credit where credit is due. I feel like this also kind of gives us a different, I keep saying the word perspective, but hey, you know what? Perspective <laughs> of showing, you know, the, the dirty underbelly of Hollywood. To my first friend in the theater, okay. Mrs. Lloyd Richard. <laughs> She's like, don't even say my name. Don't even put it in your mouth. It was Karen who first brought me to one whom I'd always idolize, a great actress, Margot Channing. <laughs> All right, I'll let you say my name. I, I got out, I got out. To my director, who taught me patiently and well, Bill Sampson. Mm-hmm. He knows too. And one without whose great play this night could never have been, Lloyd Richard. <laughs> Many others have made this <laughs> the happiest night of my life. He got her. I don't know if I feel bad for her or if I'm like, that's what you get. Nice speechy. You can always put that award where your heart ought to be. I don't suppose there's a drink. You have one at Max's. I don't think I'm going. This is going to be an elaborate party and it's for you. Oh, I love her. No filter. No, it isn't. It's for this. Same thing, isn't it? Exactly. I'm tired. I want to go home. Very well. I'll drop you off. Well, at least he at least he allowed her to go home. He wasn't like, no, you're going to the party. At least that. You know. Oh, who is that? No, random woman. And that is a beautiful dress. She really looks like Joan Fontaine. It's crazy. I guess I fell asleep. Please, I didn't steal anything. You can search me. You were just looking around. That's all. It was for my report. You know the Eve Harrington Club that they have in most of the girls' high schools. She's a freaking fan of Eve Harrington, and I bet you she's gonna be like exactly the way Eve was. Oh my gosh! Karma, Eve! Erasmus Hall. It's in Brooklyn, isn't it? Well, lots of actresses come from Brooklyn. You're going to Hollywood, aren't you? I might. That spill drink's gonna ruin your carpet. I'll just clean up the mess. Look at, she's like starting to do things for her. I'm telling you, it's freaking karma. You won't get home till all hours. I don't care if I never get home. That's strange. Hello. It seems Miss Harrington left her award in the taxi cab. Miss Harrington's resting, Mr. DeWitt. Oh my gosh. Next thing you know, she's going to be her assistant and then take her place. And what's your name? I call myself Phoebe. Do you want someday to have an award like that of your own? More than anything else in the world. Miss Harrington knows all about it. She knows all the secrets, all the dirt on how to do it. <laughs> Who was it? Just a taxi driver, Miss Harrington. Oh my god, a never-ending cycle.
And then she's going to become the next Eve Harrington. And then someone else will do the same thing to her. Oh my gosh, that's insane. Oh, and she tries on the freaking her outfit. Oh, that would have been cool if she looked at the camera. What in the world was this movie? This was such a well done film. I am floored. To all of you who recommended it in the comments, in the polls, on Patreon, kudos to you because y'all really know my tastes and my styles. <laughs> this was one of the best movies that I have seen on film. It was like the story was so good and the way it was written, Mankiewicz, the way he wrote this story was like, I don't even know how to describe it. I mean, he, he captured, you know, the, the, the mindsets of the male characters and how they contrast the mindsets of the, of the female characters. He really captured that in this so beautifully. It was so well done. And then the acting performances from Betty Davis. I mean, she was phenomenal and you could tell that she was just so comfortable on screen and like, it, it was just her playground essentially. Like the director rolled and she just did what she wanted and she made magic out of it. And then can we talk about Ann Baxter for a second? I mean, her performance as Eve Harrington, was amazing. Like I wanted to hate her, but at the same time, it was almost kind of genius in a way of, of what she was doing. She was getting what she wanted and she had this great ambition to get what she wanted no matter what. And Ann Baxter did such an amazing job of conveying that, you know, going in from having a facade of this like girl who just wanted to be in the presence of Margot Channing and was so humbled to have an opportunity to where her mask slipped into, you know, her real self, like ambitious and I'm going to do whatever I want to get where I want. Like she was phenomenal. I would be publicly praising her if I were freaking Betty Davis. She did fantastic. And I'm still floored as to how he wrote the, the, his female characters, they were so fleshed out, but I don't know if maybe he had spoken with other actresses to kind of gain perspective or if he knew of a woman who was going through this. I don't know. It's, it was just, he's a mastermind. So thank you guys so much for recommending this. This is 100% in my top five favorites. If I had to rate it, I would give it a 10 out of 10. It was phenomenally acted, phenomenally directed, written beautifully. I mean, and a big, big shout out to Mary Orr, the original writer of the short story. I give her major props because this story is is like, it's amazing. It was just so well done on all fronts. So thank you guys so much for recommending it and thank you so much for watching it with me. All right, everyone, that does it for this video. As always, if you liked it as much as I did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to become an official Tiffany Club member, then I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification to stay in the loop. If you would like to see this film's full reaction, you will find it on my Patreon, as well as our FlickPick polls, which allow you to vote for future videos, and our MWM live watch parties, where we come together and we sit down and we watch one classic film live via Zoom. If that's something that sounds of interest to you, then I highly encourage you to check out that Patreon link, which is in the description box below. In the next video, we are going to be finishing our most requested series by watching a highly requested film on the channel. We are going to be watching James Dean in Rebel Without a Cause. Now I'm so excited to watch Rebel Without a Cause because of James Dean. This will be my first James Dean film and I've heard so many interesting things about his acting technique. Um, so I'm very excited to dive into that. If you have not seen A Rebel Without a Cause, I strongly encourage you to watch it before watching the reaction. And I have provided links down in the description box of where I bought my physical copy as well as where you can stream it online. If you have a recommendation for any classic Hollywood films, head on over to my website, www.miatiffany.com scroll all the way down and you will find our recommendation form. I did not have a burning question today. However, if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, go ahead and let me know down in the comments. Also, you can ask me on Instagram and Twitter. My handle is at Mamma Mia Tiffany. And I'm also available on email. My email is miawilliams642 at gmail.com. Finally, guys, this is always a pleasure. Thank you so much for watching. Please stay safe and healthy out there and I will see all of you in the next video. Bye everyone.
Okay, 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 this is my favorite part. <laughs> All About Eve origin Arajanardad. Arajanardad? No. Or was inspired to write her short story after learning of a real life situation between actress Elizabeth Actress. Actress. Now, he also had the privilege of casting his first choice of Eve Harrington, actress and why do I say actress with a T at the end? What is wrong with me? Oh, and she believed that it was the role of a lifetime. Because of this, she agreed. A creed? A creed? What? <laughs> why do I want to say Davis, Gary, George? There's like three different names happening in my head that I just want to say all at once. And finally, All About Eve is the only film in Oscar history, history, history without a T? Really? Wow. What? Also, if you would like to become an official Tiffany Club member, then I highly encourage you to hit that bell subscribe button and notification bell. <laughs>